Good afternoon. Today is Friday, December the 5th, and the time right now is three minutes past one in the afternoon. Overnight, we have very quiet movements uh, on Wall Street, uh, although we do have a bit of a mixed uh, reaction in the major equity index. We have the Dow Jones basically edging a marginal gain, whereas the S&P 500 and the uh, NASDAQ 100 both continue to slide for the third day. Uh, consecutively. So we can see that the new high traded this year, in fact, this is an all-time high in the cash index is 37,790.08 in the cash uh, in the Dow Jones uh, industrial average. Uh, prices has remained uh, uh, very stable. Uh, I think everybody's waiting for tonight's uh, non-farm payroll and uh, we do expect uh, the non-farm payroll to actually decrease from uh, 199,000 jobs created in November to 170,000 jobs. So that is a markdown of something like 30,000. 30, and uh, unemployment rate is expected to climb up to 3.8% from 37 So the market is actually gearing up for a, a non-farm payroll as I'm speaking. So the thing is this, uh, in the S&P 500, we continue to see uh, prices continue to edge lower, like I mentioned earlier. This is the third consecutive day uh, since the start of the new year uh, that the market has pulled back. And this is seen to be a technical pullback on very light profit taking after the stellar uh, performance in the last two months of 2023, we can see that equity markets are very, very buoyant right now in expectation of some kind of rate cuts in 2024. Although the Fed has signaled at best three cuts, but the market is expecting six cuts. So the market is pricing a much deeper cut than the Federal Reserve would like to admit. Now, whether or not we're going to get a cut and when we're going to get a cut is going to be important. Uh, a lot of people were talking about having the first cut in March of this year. However, that is highly unlikely because uh, I think the interest rates is going to stay stable for now until we get some kind of updates in the data. And the Fed has already told us that they are going to be data dependent, meaning to say that they can change their mind. They are not ruling out uh, even hiking rates uh, one more time. Uh, the thing is that we will have to watch the, the numbers as they are revealed. And in the NASDAQ 100, we can see that uh, the pullback in the equity index is a little bit more severe in the NASDAQ, uh, purely because NASDAQ actually had overshot itself by uh, uh, gaining 53%, more than 53% last year. So to see a deeper pullback is actually quite natural. It does not suggest that tech stock is in trouble, not yet at least, but we can see that Apple stock has been downgraded and we can see that this is going to be an important indication as to where the tech stocks are heading going forward. And uh, near term, I think there's going to be a possibility market may actually challenge uh, the November close at 15,947.87 in the cash index for the NASDAQ 100 in, uh, 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 equity index. So do look out for uh, maybe further losses, at least in the beginning of uh, tonight. Uh, but I think there's going to be a good chance it may bounce into next week. Okay. So do watch out for a bounce going into uh, tonight's session, especially late in the session itself. Over in Nikkei, we can see Nikkei has been doing very well. Uh, we can see that yesterday we have a uh, uh, we have a markdown to 32,670 before the market edges up very, very strongly, almost a thousand points this morning to a height of 33,560. Now, this is where it's getting into trouble because uh, numerous attempts to take out the 37, th th the 34,000 has failed and this will not be any difference. I think the top side resistance is going to be very, very heavy and uh, definitely nobody wants to take the lead here and we are all waiting for Wall Street to take the lead tonight. Over in Hong Kong, we can see that Hong Kong prices remain stable, although this morning we have a bit of a scare. Uh, the market actually went down lower to 16,496 in the futures contract before bumping up to 16,807 and now currently trading at 16,666. So again, this is not going to give us any kind of indication where it's going to hit. But by and large, we can see that this is a three-way rebound. And if it's a three-way rebound, it likely to be the case. If this is only a simple three-way, then the market is getting ready to trade to the downside as far as technicals are concerned. And over in the dollar, we can see dollar continue to be very well, very well bid. And this is in contrast to what we saw over the last two months. Uh, at the end of October, we can see that the dollar has been basically one track uh, trading lower all the way down to 100.32 in the dollar index. And this this year, in the first week of 2024, we can see the dollar started to rebound. And this is, like I say, this is part of a rebound. And I think this rebound is not over yet. There's a good possibility if the market can stay above the 102.28 uh, in the futures contract, we can get a good chance to actually test back the 104.30 levels. So do look out for further gains in the dollar index towards the 104 levels. And if that's the case, of course, 
we will see lower prices in the principal currency. Yesterday night, we have a bit of a rebound in the euro versus the dollar. The euro dollar traded to a low 108.93 before bouncing to 109.72 and it eases back. But I think there's a very good chance we can see a three wave rally to 110, 110.15 to 110.40 is where I think I'm looking for to reestablish short position for the next leg lower to test the 107.20 levels. In the sterling, we can see sterling have a different structure altogether. Sterling seems to be holding very well at 126.10 levels. And this is actually laying the condition for further gains in sterling, perhaps even taking out the 128.27 with target at somewhere between 128.75 to 129 level, uh, 123, 130 levels. So again, do watch out for further gains in the sterling, which is behaving very differently from the euro versus the dollar. And uh, in the Aussie, we can see Aussie this morning traded to test the 0 0.6695 levels. And currently, as I'm speaking, we have a marginal low at 0 0.6693. And this suggests that we probably will see lower prices to challenge the November close at 0 0.6605. Uh, if we do get a bounce back into 0 0.6780 to 0 0.6805, I think that would be a good level to reposition short for the next leg lower into the 0 0.65 levels. In dollar Canadian, uh, very much like the dollar index, we should be able to see higher prices in the dollar Canadian with a chance that the market will challenge a November close at 135.85. And let's see what happens. If the market do pull back marginally to, uh, let's say, at uh, 132.90 to 133, uh, I think that would be a good level to pick up some more long position for the next leg higher. And in the dollar versus the yen, we can see dollar yen remains very well bid, uh, currently trading uh, just under 145 at 144.95. And the immediate uh, re resistance is going to come from 145.30 to 146 levels. So look out for some kind of selling pressure to re-emerge from this current level for a retest of 140.25. And uh, in the precious metals, we can see precious metals remains well bid, although it did pull back to $2,030 uh, recently. We, uh, but by and large, I do expect to see lower prices in, uh, in gold market. If we do get a three-wave bounce here at 2096 to $2,061. That could be one area to watch out for the market to come back down again in a three-way pullback, possibly challenging the October close of uh, October close of $1,990. And over in silver, silver uh, does looks a little bit uh, weaker than gold right now. It traded to a low overnight of $22.67. And this is uh, finding some kind of bid. The bid uh, coming in from within the $22.50 level uh, is no surprising because I think this is going to be a good level for the market to actually edge higher. So gold and silver may act independently of each other, at least for the near term. Over in the gold uh, in the oil market last night's release of the uh, stock levels in the US suggests that the inventory is actually climbing and that is a neg uh, negative for crude oil prices. So crude oil uh, actually edged down from just under $74 to, to, to test the $71 before rebounding. Currently, it's trading at $72.68. I think there's a good chance the market will take out the $76 on the way to $79, okay? And over in Bitcoin, Bitcoin uh, is struggling right now. We can see that the market actually went down to $40 $880 before bouncing back to $44.76, okay, 44746 And largely, this pullback is actually on rumors that uh, the uh, SEC, which is the Security Exchange Commission, is going to deny all 14 applications for a spot BTC ETF license. However, that uh, has been denied, and uh, we do not know what's going to happen, but it's getting very, very volatile. Somewhere next week, we should get some kind of answers from the SEC as to whether they are going to approve any of the application. Market is looking at the July the 10th, okay? So it is like five days from now. Let's watch out if there's going to be anything, but anything leading into the July the 10th, uh, January the 10th is going to be volatile. This is all I have for you. And tonight, that's live trading. And uh, if you are keen to watch me trade live for the non-farm payroll, do log in. Uh, registration link is uh, in my website. Uh, do watch out for that. In the meantime, you take care. I come back to you on Monday. And in the meantime, you have a great weekend again. Bye-bye.